global warming is like an asteroid that is already hitting the Earth in super slow motion. And there are even more asteroids and even larger ones. There is the asteroid of species extinction. There's the asteroid of land degradation. There's the asteroid of plastic and other harmful substances. And there's the asteroid of an imbalanced nutrient cycle. This chain of asteroids is also known as the planetary boundaries we have already crossed. And in doing so, we probably created the largest Earth system emergency of all time. But I don't know panic. As a system scientist, I was analyzing these asteroids for the last 20 years. And of course, I'm not alone. Thousands and thousands of scientific teams worldwide were analyzing data, were discussing ideas, were rejecting the bad ones, and trying to develop better explanations for more than 100 years. And that's why we understand this Earth system emergency so well. But this is not a problem because there is a good message. Because we understand this Earth system emergency so well, we are able to find solutions. And for example, we know how we could transform our mobility system to a fossil-free way. So we could use electric vehicles, we could use trains and bicycles, and we could use new sailing ships. We know techniques which um, we can apply and which help us to generate heat and energy, and which are even cheaper than the fossil fuel-free ones. We know that a resilient ecosystem with lots of species in it could sequester CO2. And in case of a forest, we know that now timber is produced. And timber is a very well construction material which could replace concrete, because concrete and its production is also a source of CO2. We know how we could internalize all these costs of this emergency into our economy. And we know how to produce long-living materials and products and how we could recycle them. We know that reducing the consumption of meat and dairy products would, of course, mitigate climate change. But it also would reduce the land degradation and it would improve the nutrient cycle. Of course, all these solutions are not perfect, but they are worth to try. They help us to make steps forward into a worth living reality. So, we know the solutions and we understand the problem. How could we increase the speed? Because we are definitely too slow. Well, before I answer this question, I want to invite you to look at how a transformation of a system works. Imagine a bare soil of land, and this happens because maybe you reduce your meat consumption, and therefore we need not anymore all these pastures and for the production agriculture. And after a few years, small trees appear. They start sequestering CO2, and after a while more trees appear, they sequester more, wood is CO2 is transformed into wood. And after 100 years, this bare soil and bare land is transformed into a species-rich forest, which store a lot of CO2 in wood. And here you see, over time, the accumulation of the carbon in this ecosystem. And at the end, we have a transformed system. Another example. 25 years ago, probably nobody of you had a cell phone, or maybe a few. 
But in the last 25 years, we were able to develop and bring these infrastructure we needed, the antennas, the production lines, to every corner of the world. So everybody now has a cell phone and the infrastructure to use it. Same curve. And this time, you see over time, the amount of mobile phones we see on Earth. And last example. If you have a rumor in your group, in the beginning only a few people know about it. But step by step, more and more people know it. And in the end, almost everybody knows this new information. And again, we see the same curve, which we call a sigmoid curve. And the sigmoid curve has two very interesting characteristics. In the beginning, we see an almost exponential growth. So we have amplifying, self-amplifying mechanism and positive feedback. In the second phase, the opposite happens. So we see decelerating processes and damping processes. And now the interesting part comes. What happens if we increase this curve only slightly in the beginning? The whole curve shifts forward and the transformation is much faster because we only increase the transformation in the beginning a slightly, a small bit. To give you a short interim summary, we know the problem, we know the challenge we have, and we have a lot of solutions for most of these problems we, we see. But we are definitely too slow. We also know that a transformation very often follows such a sigmoid curve, and the crucial point is the beginning. In the second part of my talk, I will show you how you could help to amplify this transformation, as we all are responsible for a worth living reality by doing more and more sustainable behavior in the next 20 years. This challenge looks so overwhelming, especially for a single person. For a single person, this is too big. And very often, the conclusion is, if it's so big, I cannot do it. I need, or well, we all as society need strong forces to shift the whole society, like taxes, like subsidies, like laws, like international agreements. Well, it's true. We need them. They are important, but they are not the only leverage we have. I invite you now to select one random person on Earth from our whole society of 8 billion people. Oh, okay. Seems to be me. Well, it works with me, but it also works with everybody of you. As a social being, I have friends, I have colleagues, I have my family. With all of them, I have a personal relationship. And I really love to maintain this relationship. So here, you see my very simplified, real social network. In this case, I show you six of my friends. But of course, my social network is much larger and yours probably as well. Normally, we have 100 to 150 persons to which we maintain personal relationships. And they also have a network of 100 to 150 personal relationships. And their friends as well. If this is true, more than one million people have a link to the German Chancellor with only two persons in between. Three persons in between allows everybody in Germany to be linked with the German Chancellor. And with five persons in between, you could reach every person on Earth. But let's come back to my personal network. So what happens if I change my behavior? Well, my friends will look at me and say, oh, what's he doing? And because they're looking so critical, I have the desire to come back to my old behavior. 
because it doesn't feel nice and it feels a bit uncool, maybe. Maybe I also don't want to have these conflicts on discussing why I do this all the time. Maybe I just want to live in harmony with my friends and want to omit all conflicts. So the question is, what helps me to make a step and remain at this new position? Well, it helps if I'm convinced that this step is important. And why is it important? Because maybe this new position is more in harmony with my personal values. Maybe I have a personal goal which I want to reach. I have a so-called intrinsic motivation. And if I stay in this new position, the same forces which pulled me back before will now pull my friends forward because they also don't want to look uncool in my view. They also want to be in harmony with me. They don't want to fight all these conflicts. And on top of this, I show them how I walk, how I made the step, so they can follow me much more easily. To give you an example. For example, I decided to, re to increase the healthiness of my food and therefore reduce meat and dairy products. And then my friends get puzzled, and some of them definitely will make some jokes. But then I, they realize, well, he's still there. He still eats less meat, so maybe it's interesting and maybe it tests well. So they become open-minded for this new way of living. And they have the benefit that I tasted all these ugly new soya things. And I could show them, okay, this one is tasty. And because I stay there, and because I show it, and because I probably get a bit more healthy because I reduce meat and dairy products, I give them the proof of concept that this step is worth to try. So stepping forward is only one side of the coin. There's another important issue. The point is you have to talk to your friends and to your family and your colleagues in a positive way. This doesn't mean to say, well, I was in this TED talk and there was a scientist and he told about all these asteroids and that's because of you and now you have to um, sell your cars and you have only eat raw vegetables and, um, from now on. And it's a scientist, so it's the truth. Well, that's maybe not the best strategy. And interestingly, in science, there's also guys who think about, well, how could we motivate people? And there's a scientific concept about how we make decisions in the context of the environmental and sustainable issues. And this concept suggests that everybody of us rank values differently. So for one person, coolness is very important, or the status, or profit. For another person, Maybe the easy way of living is important, comfort. Another person really does everything for his friends and his family. And a fourth person really cares about the planet and life and the beauty of nature. So everybody of us has an individual value compass, which consists of altruistic, egoistic, hedonistic, and biospheric values, and the different ranks of it. And this is different between everybody of us. If you now talk to your friends why you made this step, explain it on their individual value compass and not on yours. So for persons which are interested in coolness, explain them why this step is cool or why it's profitable. For other persons, explain them why it's easy to reach or why it's comfortable help them to reach this point, and so on. And even if you can't make a certain step because of your individual circumstances, tell them about your ideas, how you want to make a step, and what's helping them um, to do it. Also, share ideas of what you can do and what they can do. Because this creates the intrinsic motivation I mentioned in the beginning, and the others and help them 
to make their initial step forward. Walking is important and a positive, motivating, supportive talk. So this walk and talk and the network theory harmonizes together. Imagine I make a step towards a more sustainable future. And I talk about it in a positive way to my six friends. And let us be pessimistic. They don't move all the way. They just move half the way. Nevertheless, the overall effect of my walk and talk is four times larger now than if I show only on my step. And now remember, these six friends have also friends. And let us assume they only could convince four of their friends to make only a small quarter step. But because of network theory, we now have a 10 times larger effect compared to my single step, because I walk and talk. So more and more people join. And the whole society starts moving. Because remember, your prime minister, your president, your chancellor, it's only three persons away. And if now all the society starts moving just a bit, all these big forces like laws, taxes, subsidies, international agreements will work even better because more people will accept it and more people will support and behave in their idea. So we have a positive feedback on top of this social movement as in the transformation we see before. And on top of this, now also all these solutions we already know will be realized more easily. They will spread like a rumor in the, in the society. And because of this, the transformation speed increases more. The sigmoid curve steepens, the end of the transformation is nearer. And finally, we will truly see a future which is healthy, clean, safe, and fair. And in the end, we therefore will end the Earth system emergency. Because you walk and talk today.